instead of on the top of the phone like the Droid Razor. One, two, three, if you look at the other side of the keyboard. This is CP Tech. Hello and welcome to another episode of Carlisle's Picks Technology Channel. And today we're looking at the realities of looking at 2K or streaming 2K and 4K videos today. I recently watched a video by MKBHD. Definitely subscribe to his channel. He's a great guy. He does a lot of uh, tech reviews, cell phones, and you know things like that. And I think he did a state of the state of HD address or something like that. Basically, he's talking about how things are, you know, in terms of these new, you know, 2K and 4K standards in terms of the user experience, the equipment, and the availability of content at those resolutions and all that good stuff. And one of the things that he mentioned, he was very, very, very positive about this, you know, the state of things were pretty positive and, you know, it's pretty easy to watch these things. And, you know, this is a very rare time that I actually disagree with MKBHD, very smart guy, again, great content, but this is one of those times where I absolutely disagree. Um, the state of things is not very good at all. And I will prove it to you. Basically, in, in a nutshell, um, a vast majority of people are not capable of streaming 2K and 4K HD. Even myself with high-end systems, it's problematic depending on the scenario. And I've got different computers. I have this computer you're looking at right now, which has a um, Intel i7 processor. This computer is about uh, maybe a year and a half to two years old now i7 processor has got a in, NVIDIA GeForce uh, GTX 680 uh, graphics card in there, 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's got a solid state drive, so got a lot of power, you know, I'm, I'm doing editing using the CUDA uh, system with Adobe Premiere for real time, you know, it's a powerful machine, this is a lot more power than, than most of the viewers are going to have. Okay, so just give that as a benchmark. I also have a brand new laptop. It's the Asus ZenBook. It has a dedicated graphics card. It's got Windows 10.1, uh, I think it is. And um, I'm sorry, not Windows 10.1. I think it's... Yeah, it is Windows 10.1. I think so. I'm confused. Did I do 8 or, or 10? I don't remember. But anyway, it's a brand new laptop. It's a ZenBook. It's a uh, fourth generation i7 processor. It's got the same amount of RAM on, on, on this uh, computer. Anyway, so what we're looking at right now is this is our baseline. I basically restarted the machine so it's fresh. I don't have a lot of nonsense running. You can see CPU is idling 1%, 3%, 1%, 3%. You can see my RAM that's being used up is 3.1 gigabytes. I can get it even lower than that if I reboot. What I did instead of rebooting is I logged out. So that killed a lot of uh, little uh, memory hogs that are running. And in fact, I'm going to go even further than that. I'm going to close out of Skype. I got Skype running. So I just quit Skype. And now basically the machine is pretty clean, pretty lean, down to 3.06 gigabytes of RAM. All right. Now we want to observe the performance of this machine. Um, what, I want to, what I want you guys to see or to take note of is the CPU activity based on the resolution that I'm streaming. Because some people commented, I was watching a video by Dr. M3, another great guy to subscribe to if you're into cars, and he just did a 4K video. And I commented about the problematic nature of streaming the video at this resolution for most people. And one guy said, oh, it's not your hardware, it's just about your internet connection. Now, granted, I have a 50 megabit per second connection, which is probably faster than most. And um, so my connection is certainly fast enough. 4K is sluggish, a little bit stuttery on, on, on this machine, watching this 4K video. 2K, I can do okay, but maybe if I have some things, too many things running in the background, it's a problem. So it's not something that I can do idly. But the bottom line is, what is the effect on the CPU? Because the guy says, oh, it's not your hardware, it's just your, your, your internet connection. Oh, really? Well, let's take a look at this. We're starting at 144p, the lowest right now, and I'll play the video back. So you can see the CPU barely is affected. I mean, that spike, I think, was me redrawing this window. Let's see. Oop, sorry. See that? That spike is me redrawing the window. Streaming the video is not much different than idle. See idle over here? 
streaming the video here. It's peaking out about 6% CPU. Dropping as low as 1 and 2. <clears throat> Let's bump it up to 720p. This is something that I think 90% of people can play, if not more. So it's not, it's, it's, it's re adjusting right now. It's still playing 144. See the little gear icon? There you go. Now it's playing 720p. See, now it's, it's, it's three or four minimum peaking up to seven and 12. See the difference of 720p? Now let's jump it up to 1080p. A little peak right there. That's when it actually, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. It wasn't adjusted yet. Now it's actually playing 1080p. So you see a big jump in CPU. So that's proof right there. The resolution of your stream does definitely rely on your hardware. So let's say if your computer is so slow that you're already close to max with just regular 144p, then 1080p would destroy you. Now, since I have such a powerful machine that it's barely using any CPU for that resolution, I can jump as high as full 1080p, which is what we have right now. And I still have lots of CPU available. But that's only because my machine is that powerful. If your machine is already up here for lower resolutions, then you're not going to be able to go to this resolution even. Now, let's jump to 2K. And I'll tell you when it's, see, it's adjusting. It's not there yet. That's why you don't see a change yet in a CPU, hovering around in teens now, 15, 16, that's, that's 1080p is doing that. Okay, we're in 2K right now, and you see 2K, now we're in the 20s, 20 minimum, jumping up, spiking up to, uh, Actually, dropping from 20 to, to 15, 15 to 20, 25. It's definitely using up more CPU than before. And let's try 4K now, 4K. Just loading it up, loading it up, loading it up. I'll tell you when it's done. So it's still doing 2K. It's not doing 4K yet. 41, 40. Now it's playing 4K. You see that spike? Look at the CPU usage. 33, 37. You see how the CPU usage has been going up and up and up and up depending on what resolution? So you have to have the hardware. You've got to have the CPU. I don't know how much the graphic card is being used, but I can presume that the graphics card is relevant as well. Now let's drop it from 4K down to 720p. So you can see the difference. It's playing 720p already. Look at that. See the drop? First of all, I'm going to be shooting in celebration of Geneva my first video, which is this video in 4K. So be sure to check it out. Number two, I'm going to be going to Geneva with a very good friend of mine, that dude in blue, David Patterson. Look at his channel for his. And then jump up to 2K HD. Loading, loading, loading. Even as it's loading, the CPU is rising already. There it is, just kicked in. Look at that spike. Now, that's not the only problem. There's also additional problems that you run into 
So let me see if I can demonstrate. Let's refresh this video. So we're starting from scratch. So actually, let me go to his main page. And then click on the video there. So this is you loading up a video for the first time, and then you realize it's in 4K. So you, so you, first of all, YouTube automatically selected 720p. So YouTube thinks that's the best resolution. With all my hardware, my fast internet connection, YouTube thinks 720p is the best for me. So let me say, okay, I want to see the 4K. So I'm going to go ahead and select the 4K. Jump right up to 4K. Look at the gear icon. You see that? It doesn't even show HD. Why? It selected 480p. So this, these are the kinds of things that you run into trying to stream 2K and 4K. There's even buggy things like this you have to deal with. I selected 4K, and instead of giving me 4K, it actually drops my resolution down to 480. And look at that. It just jumped up to 720p. That was weird. It jumped up to 720p by itself, which I think is what I, what I had before. I think I started at 720p. I try to select 4K, it drops to the lowest, and now it goes back up to the resolution I had before. So now I gotta go select it again. This is typical. I have to select it twice. Now it's trying to load it up, trying to load it up. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. That's another thing. I have to do, there's a delay. Now it's playing 4K. And look at that. See that weird artifact? I've been noticing that. Whenever I change to 4K, there's a weird artifact that happened on the video. It goes away, and then it's not playing back 100% smooth. If you look at it, it's kind of stuttery. I don't know what frame rate he's using, but it's kind of stuttery. If you look at his hands, look at the way the background's moving. Now, let's see if it's just the, the frame rate that he shot his video in, because let's play it back in a resolution that we know I can handle. So go into 1080p, full 1080p, to see if there's any difference in the smoothness. Alright, so this is 1080p. Share it with your friends and let's get this started. Geneva, here we come. Boom, the red storm. And why am I so excited? Because we're gonna see a host of amazing new cars. Let me try to run down. I don't know what frame rate he's using, but I don't think his frame rate is all that high. But it certainly seems higher at 1080p than it did at 4K. I mean you tell me you guys what you guys think, but to me I think this is smoother. It could be smoother even than this, but I don't think it's a matter of the streaming or anything like that. I think this is a, a low frame rate video, which is made even lower when you try to stream it at 4K. So think about that. You got an action video, you have it in 4K, potentially people are not going to be getting the really uh, good experience watching it because if it's, if it's stuttery at 4K. And that's if they can even play it at 4K. Here's a speed test for the internet. Let's get this started. Geneva, here we come. Boom, the red storm. 48 megabits per second. Forty eight point four three download. So that's a pretty fast connection, I would say. Certainly should be fast enough to stream 2K and 4K videos. And most people probably don't even have connections as fast as this. I think a lot of people have like 20 megabits per second. So I'm an example of one of the fastest connections that you're gonna see, and I'm having issues. So what does that mean for, for the masses? You know, so the state of streaming 2K and 4K is definitely not very good right now. My estimate, I don't really have the data to back this up. I don't have any statistics, just thinking logically. Um, I'm thinking about 10% of my viewers are even capable of playing 2K, much less 4K. I don't even want to speculate on 4K. 4K has got to be ridiculous. Um, but... Um, 
That's all she wrote. You're watching the Carlisle's Picks Technology Channel, and this is the uh, true state of 2K and 4K streaming today, 2015. This is March 1st, 2015. And by the way, if you're into cars, the Geneva Auto Show is coming up, and stay tuned on my car channel, your Fast Life Cars, for coverage of all the new awesome cars like that you see right here, the new Ferrari uh, 4, 488 GTB and a lot of other awesome cars coming up. All right, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and thumbs up the video and share and subscribe. You're watching Carlisle's Picks and we're here live in New York City doing a speed test with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8.4. In this test, I'm just going to be basically trying to showcase the performance of this device.